all the bottles have come from uh, the area around the south abutment on Destructor Ridge. So when, once we'd removed the bridge, we then started uh, de demolishing the, the, the brick abutment, which is what the bridge sits on, down to the river level. And this, these were all found in the area around that as we, as we excavated down. Well, of course, this is a brownfield site. There, there was industrial activity here. Um, what sort of things have you discovered? Well, I mean, this one here, uh, as you can see, it's rather dirty, but you can see it's actually a, a disinfectant bottle. Uh, so, so that's one of the ones we you're, found. You're a very clever man. How do you know that? Well, you can see the writing on... <laughs> you can just about make out the writing under there. Uh, we've also got this as a, a Schwetz one, which most people will recognise. Obviously, the bottle shape has changed, but I'm assuming that was tonic at some point. Uh, and there's a bottle here that looks... Like it might have been a gin bottle, so maybe that was the, the gin to go with the tonic. Um, yeah, I, I seem no to remember a, a, a make called De Kuiper that is certainly shaped like that. Um, of course, glass bottles, I think, uh, were categorised according to colour, and I always thought poison was in blue, but you've got a green bottle here, which actually says, doesn't it, not to be taken? Yes, it, it's, it's green. It says not to be taken, so we're not sure whether it was poison or it was some other embrocation, which we just meant don't swallow it. Uh, and it was you know, for, for external use only, but uh, I'm sure somebody will, out there will know exactly what it was for. Well, this interview will no doubt be watched by people who do collect bottles like this, so uh, if anybody comes through to the virtual museum, I'll make sure they let you know. Uh, now, that's a shape that I recognise. Well, yes. I mean, initially you see it as Patterson's, but it's when you turn it around and you see it's got camp coffee, which I believe is still made. Uh, I'm not quite sure when camp coffee started, but uh, it's certainly been around a long time. I think it goes back to the late 1800s, actually, but at one time, that's all you could get in this country before, I think, instant coffee started to arrive from America. My father was in the Merchant Navy, and I think I can remember him bringing a brand called Maxwell House uh, back into the house. Um, there's an element here, maybe, of something that was dropped by someone who was a lot younger. Yes, we found this, uh, and we only really found it in the box of today, and nobody really realised it was there. It's, a, it's actually plastic rather than lead, so it, it must be reasonably modern. But it's a cricketer, and he actually does rotate. So we think he's a bowler, and that's his bowling movement. Maybe the England team could do with him now. Maybe somebody will tell the Virtual Museum, that's mine, I dropped it 30 years ago. Uh, it's all great stuff and very interesting to look at. I, I understand you are going to let the local museums have a look, just in case there is something incredibly valuable. Yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's another 30 or 40 bottles uh, around. Uh, I don't know what most of them are, but there may be something that is actually quite rare and uh, would, the best place for it would be in the museum. Now, while we're talking about the work going on on the riverside here, how are things going with uh, replacing the old destructor? Well, on the, on the uh, south side of the, the river, we're actually out of the ground now and we're starting our first concrete pour today of the new abutment for the bridge. So that's moving quite well. And on the north side, we're uh, just finishing off the demolition of the old abutment and the big concrete wall that, that runs along the towpath. Uh, and that's just been moving on a little bit slower purely because of the, the temporary works that we need to do to support the highway into the recycling centre and to support the river wall as well. Obviously, we're, we're digging down below the river wall at that side. You don't want the whole thing to collapse into the river? No, certainly not. It would be very embarrassing. And as I understand it, the first bits of the new bridge are, are due to arrive in a matter of weeks. Yes, the, we'll, in about th three or four weeks, the sections of the bridge will start arriving and we'll start actually building the bridge on the, on the south bank uh, and with the intention is to then slide the, bridge, the new bridge into place January, February next year. So when will people be walking or cycling across it? Uh, once the bridge has gone across, we've still got some finishing works to do, so it's probably going to be uh, early, early summer or late spring, early summer next year, hopefully. But uh, we're, we're on schedule. We're on schedule, but obviously, everything, you know, let's just hope we have a, a kind winter to us. Uh, just before I go, the old Destructor, uh, a pretty ordinary bridge, but it did have decorative scrolls, I think, on the north side, the other side of the yes, river. Yes, the, there were two scrolls on the, on the north side, which uh, when we did the demolition, we took off carefully, and those have been put, as put aside for hopefully uh, potential reuse somewhere. Uh, 
but I'm not quite sure what the actual plans are, but they are safely uh, tucked away and uh, in the dry 